it's been a while since I have been uh, back, since I have been working in Akkadian grammar, and I thought I would go back and review a bit and pick up uh, where we left off and bring us up a little bit further. I am working, I have worked through part three, line 52 through part four, uh, line, uh, let me just see here, line 49. So I would like to just work through that. Do Part of this will be review. The other part will be looking at new material. So we're picking up at line 52. And this is in part uh, three. I'm following Borger in the way he has uh, outlined the lines and everything. So uh, as I pick up in line 52, uh, I've done the trans, uh, the normalization following Borger's transliteration. So we're at 52 and uh, Hammurabi is talking about all that he has accomplished. So line 52 then reads, Mutahid Nuhshim Bitam Egalma. The one who causes to flourish uh, the house of Gula. Actually, uh, Meeks, who has done a wonderful translation uh, in on this in the ancient Near Eastern text, uh, writes, the one who makes the temple of Egalma abound with affluence. And the first word, mutahid, uh, nukshim, the second, that would be line 52 and 53. The one who causes to flourish is the way I rendered that, a D participle, masculine singular from tahadu, to flourish. So the one who causes to flourish, literally of abundance or in abundance. Nukshim is from nukshu, meaning abundance. And here, and we're reviewing this, is a genitive singular. So the one who causes in abundance uh, to flourish Bitam Egalma, the house of Egalma. Bitam, the Sumerian is a capital E. Bitam means house. It's an accusative singular in the am ending. The house of Egalma. Egalma is the temple of Gula at Ur, uh, which is the Babylonian goddess of well being. And so he's talking about how all that he did to help the gods and goddesses. And so in line 55, it continues, the Ushungal Shari Talim Dinger Zababa. And I've rendered this the monarch of kings. The uh, favorite brother of Zababa, uh, Ushum Gal, uh, the Sumerian is Gal Shum, capital G A L, capital U, capital Sheen S U M. And so Ushum Gal would be the monarch of king. Shari is your genitive plural from Sharum. Uh, and then Talim, uh, continuing in the uh, genitive, the favorite brother of Zababa. Uh, Talim, I'm rendering as favorite uh, brother. So the favorite brother, uh, Meeks has rendered that the full brother of Zababa. Zababa... <laughs> 
is the or was the Sumerian and Akkadian warrior god uh, of the city of Kish, husband of Inanna, the Sumerian goddess, and uh, also Akkadian Ishtar. So then as we move on, or the Babylonian Ishtar, line 58, we continue. Uh, Mushashid Shubat Mushtashir uh, Melemi Emet Ursad. Uh, that would be the one who has founded. It's from uh, Rashadu to find. It is a Sheen participle masculine singular from Rashadu. So the one who has founded Shubat is the uh, noun meaning dwelling, uh, and it's from Shuk 2, related to the Hebrew Yashab, to dwell, I believe. So the dwelling of, and here we have a noun in construct with Kish, uh, Ki, uh, key is meaning a place uh, of Kish. And it's a Sumerian town near Babylon. So the one who founded the dwelling of Kish, Mustashir me lemi e met tur which would be Mustashir. Uh, is the one who has surrounded, or who's surrounded. The root is shaharu, to surround. It's a sheen, t, participle, masculine, singular, from the root to found, a shaharu, or, or excuse me, to surround. So the one who surrounded, melemi, would be, the splendor of the splendor of Emet Ursa. So the one who surrounded and Meeks rendered that, and I, I think I would agree for sure, who so surrounded with splendor. So the one who surrounded of splendor or with splendor, Emet Ursa. And again, as we continue in line 63, then. Uh, mu esh tets b patsi sha dinger ishtar. The one uh, who put in perfect condition, and I'm understanding mush tets b to be from the root uh, sabu. Uh, to put in a perfect condition a sheen t participle, masculine singular. The uh, ordinances, parsi, uh, rubutim, the great ordinances of Ishtar. So this, I believe, would be a, a genitive slash accusative plural uh, from the root a patsu meaning or or from patsu meaning ordinance and the rabbu team means the, the ordinance from rabbu to the great ordinances so the one who put in perfect condition the great ordinances of ishtar or inanna and so uh, the uh, meeks rendered that the one who put the great shrines of Inanna in perfect condition. So the ones who put uh, the Parsi, I suppose we could render shrines. I'm understanding it as ordinances from Parsu, uh, which would relate to the worship of Inanna. And then in line 66, as we continue, it reads, uh, Pagid 
Bittim Hursag Kala. The uh, one who cares for Pagid is a G participle, masculine singular from Pagadu to care for. So the one who cares for the Bittim, the house of or sag and uh, or sag kalam i should say or or sag kalama so the one who cares for the house of or sag kalama the uh, rendition of meeks is the, the patron of the temple of or sag kalama and uh, or sag Kalama is the temple of Inanna in Kish, and she was the consort of Sababa. So then moving on into the next line, uh, which I'm showing to be 68. Uh, Sapar Nakri'i. Or nak, yeah, nak, 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 nakiri. The tear, uh, sapar of in construct with nakiri from nakru, meaning enemy. So the tear of the enemy, uh, whom er era his friend, uh, Notice Sha Era Rushu, uh, whom Era, his friend, caused to attain. Ushakshidu, uh, caused to attain his desire. Nizmasu. So going back for just a second here, Sha is the relative pronoun whom Era, whom Era. Uh, his comrade. Uh, Era, I'm, one of the things I'm finding very helpful to me is the wonderful work uh, called An Acadian Handbook by Douglas B. Miller and Mark Shipp. Wonderful work. So whom Era, and I'm using them on some of the names to see uh, what they would what they would say, and uh, their understanding of Era is the Akkadian warrior god associated with the nether world, spouse of Ereshkigal, son of Anu. It's interesting uh, when you think of the descent of Ishtar into the underworld. Uh, her sister, Ereshkugal, was the uh, goddess of the underworld. That she went down and was stripped of everything uh, and then was brought out again, uh, looking at probably the whole idea of fertility. Uh, so at any rate, at least that's what it seems to me in my understanding of it. So as we move on then, uh, whom Era, his friend, Arushu, is from uh, ru'um, meaning friend. And the shu is your pronominal suffix, third masculine singular. So whom era his friend uh, caused uh, his temple, like we said, the temple uh, era is the god, as we said, of pestilence and war and identified as nerga, nerga, his temple was in Meshlam, or was Meshlam, uh, and it was in southern Babylon at the time. And then Ushakshidu is from Kashadu to attain. And Ushakshidu is a sheen subjunctive. Following the Shah here, we have the subjunctive from the root kashadu to attain. So whom uh, era, 
whom Era, his friend, uh, caused to attain his desire. Nismasu <coughs> is the word desire, desire from nismatum. Uh, and notice here the T of nismatu became nismat, and then you added the shu, a pronominal suffix, third masculine singular. And when you have that combination, you end up with the double S. So nishmasu, meaning his desire. So whom era, his friend, uh, caused to attain his desire. And then we move on to the next line. Uh, and that we're moving into three. And we're looking at uh, the first line uh, of that. Uh, and I have numbered that as uh, the second line. But at any rate, mu sha ter uru murapish mima shumshu anameshlam. And so reading that then in line two, which would be uh, his desire who made Kutha prominent. We have who made great. Mu Sheter is a sheen participle, a masculine singular from Wataru, a 1W form. Uh, so the one who made to excel, Urukuta, Urukuta uh, is from the Sumerian, capital G-U, capital D-U, eight, capital A, and then the key showing the place uh, of Kutha. So who made great Kutha, uh, or who made prominent. And then Murapish, Mima Shumshu, Ana Meslam, which would be who expounded, uh, excuse me, who expanded uh, every kind of facility for Meslam is the way Meeks rendered it. Uh, Murapish is from the root Rapashu. It is a D participle, uh, masculine singular is the way I'm understanding it. So the one uh, from Rapashu, Mu Rapish, doubling of the P, just like in your uh, PL stem with the Mu prefix. So the one who expanded Mu Rapish, Mim Ma Shum Shu, literally all that or everything its name. So the one who expanded everything, its name. Meeks rendered it every kind of facility. So literally everything, its name, is the Akkadian. Ana Meslam. For Meslam. And uh, Meslam here, I'm just looking up some of these as I'm going through to see what the handbook says, because it gives a wonderful title of these different names. Meslam is the name of a Sumerian temple of the god Meslam Ta'a at Kutha. So it's the Sumerian god there. So the one who expanded every kind of facility for Meslam. And then we move on to the next line. Uh, Rimum kadrum munaki. Munaki. That is the wild bull. Rimum uh, means bull. So the wild bull 
kadrum would be uh, aggressive, an adjective. So the aggressive wild bull uh, meets when at the fiery wild bull. So the aggressive wild bull, munakip, uh, who uh, gores. And we're going to see goring the foe. Munakip is a D participle, masculine singular, from nakapu to gore. So the one who gores or knocks down the adversary. Zair means enemy. Uh, the it's a genitive plural, so the one who not knocks down the enemies uh, or or acute uh, oblique kind of of uh, genitive slash accusative plural, and it's from the root zaeru, which means the enemies. So the one who knocks down the enemies, uh, and then the loved one of Tutu. Notice Naramu, uh, the love, the, the, the uh, Naraam Tutu, which we could render the beloved one of Tutu. Uh, Naramu, Naram is in construct with Tutu. And here it's a title of Mardu but applied here to Nabum, the god of writing. His cult center in Barsippa near Babylon with its temple in uh, Exida. <coughs> and I'm following the quote of Meeks here in the Annette, the ancient Near Eastern text. <coughs> and then we continue in the next line. Uh, who brings joy, Muri Ish, Murish, who brings joy, Uru Barsipam, that is, who brings joy to Barsipa. And uh, Barsipa is a place that, uh, let me just check out again the. Um, book that I'm using that helps me out so much in that. And I'm learning this as I'm going through it. Barsippa is the city of Barsippa, south of Babylon, cult center of Nabu. Uh, many legal and literary tablets have been found there. So we move on then. Uh, to the next line or so. The attentive, uh, nadum, la mu parkum, ana azida. So moving on, uh, the attentive or devoted one. Uh, and here we have nadum is an adjective, in my understanding, the attentive or devoted one um, of Tutu. And uh, the one who brings joy to Barsippa. Uh, the question that here, let me just give me a second here. Uh, the attentive, the beloved one of Tutu the one who brings joy to Barsippa. Uh, let me just do one thing here and checking this out. The attentive one of um, Tutu and uh, looking up Tutu for just a moment here. Uh, Tutu is the epithet of Nabu and Marduk. So the attentive one, and 
again, Hammurabi is claiming all of this, the attentive one of Tutu, a title like we said, applied to Mardu, but here to Nabum, the god of writing, his cult center in Barsippa near Babylon. So the attentive one uh, of uh, Tutu, uh, who brings joy uh, to Barsippa. And again, that is the cult center near Babylon. So who brings joy? Uh, Murish uh, means the bringer of joy to the city of Barsippa, which would be your accusative here in Barsippa. And then uh, we move on to the next line. Uh, the devout one, never neglecting, is Zidda. Nadum la muparkim. Nadum means the attentive or devout one. La is the negative particle not. Muparkum uh, would be the one who does not neglect uh, to Izida uh, from the root to neglect uh, Paraku. So the one who does not neglect Izida. Izida again uh, this is very helpful to me just working through this. Izida actually uh, means the temple of Marduk in Barsippa. So he's taking care of all of these temples. I'm reminded in the biblical uh, Hebrew Bible how the temple uh, was built by Solomon and the importance of building the temple. Uh, and that's we're seeing that here too. And so we continue on. Uh, a god among kings. Ilu Shari. Ilu means God. Shari, a god of kings. Or we could, Shari is your genitive plural in my understanding. A god of kings uh, who knows wisdom. Mude, Iga. Igi Galim. Uh, Mude is a participle, uh, the one to know from Wadum. Uh, sort of like the Hebrew related Yata. Uh, so the one who knows a D participle, masculine singular, the knower of wisdom. Igi Galim would mean big eyes. Uh, Iggy meaning eyes in Sumerian and Gal meaning big. So if you have big eyes, you have wisdom. So the knower of wisdom. The one then who extended the cultivated land belonging to uh, Del Bat, following the Meek's rendition there. And uh, so as I would uh, read the Akkadian, Shadalu Mereshtim, uh, Shah Dilbat. Uh, Shadalu is to extend. So it's a D participle here, uh, masculine singular that we're looking at from Shadalu. So the one who extends the Mereshtim. Uh, of the cultivated lands. Mereshtim is the cultivated field. Uh, so the one who extends the cultivated fields uh, from Mereshtum, a, uh, the one who extends of the cultivated fields, we could see this uh, 
as a genitive singular with the em ending of dilbat of dilbat uh, notice dilbat here again let me just check this one out uh, dilbat is uh, a city we're told uh, but yeah that's all the information that's given in our uh, an Akkadian handbook that I'm using so the cultivated field of Dilbat and then we move to the next line who stores up grain for mighty Urash uh, Mugarin who stores up uh, kare ana urash. Mugarin is from the root garanu, to store up. It is a D participle. There's a lot of D participles used here. It's interesting to me. A D participle, masculine singular, <laughs> from garanu. So the one who stores up. And the Sumerian was capital G U R seven dot capital G U R seven uh, rendered in Akkadian as as gare, meaning the one who stores up uh, grain, and uh, kare meaning grain, the one who stores up from karu for urash, the one who stores up grain for urash ga shrim which would be for mighty urash i'm understanding ga shrim as an adjective from ga shru meaning mighty so the one who stores up grain for mighty urash uh, urash again uh, let me just uh, check this out a second uh, Urash is the uh, is the Babylonian god, the spouse of Belet Ekali. So again, this uh, uh, another uh, god, Urash. There's not any more information that I have there than that. So the one who stores up grain for mighty, for Urash, mighty Urash. And then the Lord who is adorned with scepter and crown. Belum Shimat Ha'atium, from Hatum. Uh, so the Lord, Belum meaning Lord, like related to Bel, uh, the, the Lord adorned uh, Simat with scepter, Hat, Hati, Hatim. Uh, it's from the root Hatum, or it's from the uh, noun Hatum, meaning with scepter. With scepter, U. Agi'im from Agu and with crown. So the one adorned with scepter and crown. And then the next line, line 27, uh, Sha'u Sha'akli Lushu. So the one who brings to full. Uh, or who literally uh, from Kalalu to bring to full. Uh, so the one who brings to full, uh, the next line, uh, 28, the one who brings to full the sage, uh, Mama, and uh, the one who whom the sage Mama, we, we could render, uh, brought 
or brings to full. Uh, mama, uh, we need to look that one up, who brings to full. Uh, and that's from that root that we were looking at here, uh, kalalu, to bring to full. So the one who brings to full or completion, mama. Uh, mama, again, uh, M-A-M-A, -A, um, basically, just check this out, means the Akkadian goddess, um, baby, baby word for mother. Hmm. It's interesting. Uh, so the one who brings to full mama, the Akkadian, uh, an Akkadian goddess, like a baby, sort of like our mama, I guess, uh, which is interesting to me. And then the next line, uh, who laid the plans of Kesh, uh, which would be uh, Mukin, Mukin meaning who established. Here we have a D participle uh, from the root Kanu to establish. Related really, I think, to the Hebrew Kun to establish. So the one who establishes or who established uh, and then the next phrase, uh, Utsuratim Sha Keshi. That is, the one who established uh, the plans or the building plan, Utsuratim, of the building plan, uh, from Utsurat to Sha Kish or Sha Kesh, the one who uh, makes renders it, the one who laid out the plans for uh, Kesh. No doubt, I'm thinking, looking at the building plans for Kesh. Uh, let me just look at that for just a second, Kesh. Uh, the interesting, all the different gods that are listed here, what a difference between this and the Hebrew uh, text and so forth. Kesh is a city in middle Babylon, uh, a birth goddess and her temple in Sumer uh, is what I'm reading in the uh, Akkadian handbook. So then we move on uh, of Kish. Uh, Sha is your relative pronoun, and Kashi here, a belonging of Kish, is the genitive uh, singular, in my understanding. And then we move on to the next phrase. Uh, the one who fixes, uh, who, excuse me, who makes Meeks renders it, who makes sumptuous the splendid banquets for Nintu. Uh, and the, the reading that I, or the, the, the work that I did personally was Mudeshi, from Mudeshi, the one who makes to flourish, from the root Deshu, to flourish. Here we have a D participle masculine singular from Deshu. So the one who causes to flourish, again, all of these deep uh, participles, interesting, that are used here in the text. Uh, and then the next line, 34, uh, who makes uh, sumptuous the splendid banquets of Nintor. Uh, and then, in my understanding, who makes to flourish, makali would be meals or banquet meals from makalum. Uh, and then alutim would be splendid, uh, like divine meals uh, of divinity, who makes 
splendid meals for Anantur. Anantur, for Anantur. Uh, let me just uh, check that out for one second. Nintur uh, here, uh, and just see what we are told about Nintur. Uh, the uh, Nintur. Um, basically, they suggest uh, the Nintur, it looks like the Lord Earth, Sumerian goddess of vegetation, later a war goddess, uh, Nintu, uh, now that's Ninturta, and uh, I'm wondering if that's what we're seeing here, Nintu. Give me just a second here. Uh, Nin 2. Okay. Uh, it should be the lady who gives birth. So this would be the Sumerian mother goddess is Nintur. Nintu from Nintur. Not Ninturta, but Nin 2. So just as I tried to check that out, that would be the probably the meaning. Uh, that we're looking at here. And then he, we move on. So he created many splendid, uh, wonderful banquets for Nintur, or Nintu. And then he continues to talk about what he's done. Uh, in the next line, uh, the uh, solicitous, the perfect one. Uh, the Akkadian is Mushtalum, the one who considers, or the advisor, or the solicitous one, uh, the perfect one, uh, get Malum, uh, from, uh, from get Malum, the perfect one who, uh, the perfect one who fixes the pastures, uh, Sha'im. Sha'im is a G participle, masculine singular from uh, the root Sha'u. So the one who fixes from, excuse me, from Shi'amu, the one who fixes the Miritim, uh, meritim from merutum, the pastures. Uh, again, a plural. Uh, I'm seeing it as an oblique uh, accusative plural. Uh, the pastures and the watering places for legas. So the one who fixes the pastures, u ma ashkitim, becoming mashkitim meaning watering places from shaku to drink. So the one who fixes the watering places, again, in accusative plural, oblique with the em ending, it would seem to me. So the one who fixes the watering places, analakash u gilshu. And that is for Lakash and Gilshu. Uh, Lakash, uh, <clears throat> let me just check that one out for a second here. Lakash would be a Sumerian city, a Sumerian city state halfway between the Tigris and the Euphrates, uh, is the way it's defined in the um, handbook that I'm using. So Lakash and Girsu, uh, Girsu, I should say. So looking up Girsu would be again, uh, one second here, Girsu would be the district of Lagash. So it's 
in the same district. Uh, so the one who uh, basically uh, fixes the pastures and watering places for those places, Lagash and Girsu. And then in the next line, uh, who provides, Meeks renders it beautiful sacrifices for Ininu. And Mukil uh, from Mukulu, uh, I'm rendering that the support uh, of the offerings um, as a genitive plural here uh, from Nindabu. Uh, Nindabe. A, an oblique form. Uh, so the one who provides, can we say, so it's used as an accusative, it seems to me, the one, or we could say the provider of, taking it as a genitive plural, of uh, bountiful sacrifices, uh, rabutim would be uh, many or bountiful, bountiful sacrifices, Ana e ninu for e ninu. Uh, e is, of course, the Sumerian word for house, e ninu. And I'm just going to check that out again to see how e ninu. Uh, that would be the temple of Ningirsu. Ningirsu. So the one who uh, cares for that temple uh, and provides it with bountiful or multiple sacrifices. And then finally, the last line uh, reads, Mutameh Ayabu, thinking of Oyev in Hebrew, enemy. Uh, so, the one who seizes the enemy, mutame, is from tamahu, to seize. It's a deep participle, masculine singular. Notice again the doubling of the middle radical, the mu prefix. So, the one who seizes uh, the enemy, ayabu, ayabi here, meaning enemy, from ayabu, Oyev, I'm thinking of the Hebrew, the one who seizes the enemy, and then the favorite of Telitu. Uh, Migir, Migir, from Migru, uh, a, a, um, an adjective in construct, the favorite one of Telitu. And uh, that is pretty much how far I've gone. Let me look up Talitum for just a second here. Uh, Talitum. Uh, it means uh, the exceedingly strong or an epithet of Ishtar. So we would render it basically uh, following even Meek's rendering here, and he's done a wonderful job in his renderings of the Akkadian. So the one who seizes the foe, the favorite one of Tadittu. And I'm very thankful for the work of Meeks in this, and also the wonderful work of an Akkadian handbook by Douglas B. Miller and Mark uh, Ship. I just checked this out from the library. I, I really need to order one because it, it goes more than just names of important gods and goddesses. You have paradigms, helps, glossary, logograms, and sign lists, an Akkadian uh, handbook, and extremely, extremely helpful. So at any rate, I think uh, I'm going to stop there uh, I'm hoping that this is helpful to someone. What I'm trying to do is to improve 
in my Akkadian and in the grammar. And I don't know whether the prologue has been done in this way before. I don't know whether someone has already done it. Uh, my whole goal is to work inductively through each word. And in my retirement, it's a hobby. It keeps me healthy, I think, in my mind, hopefully. Uh, and uh, it stretches me to continue uh, doing this. So thank you for your patience. Thank you if anyone is studying along with me and uh, going through this. I hope it helps. I would suggest getting a, a grammar, a deductive grammar, like Marcus or some of the others we've suggested, uh, John Huenberg, uh, trying to get the pronunciation properly, did a great job on his grammar, a huge one, former professor of Harvard. Uh, I would recommend that. Borger or some of the grammars that I would rep uh, represent. Excuse me on that pronunciation, but uh, I will try to write the name of that grammar. It's a massive work, wonderful work. And but at any rate, I would I would suggest getting a deductive uh, grammar as well. Thank you so much.